everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Yuko Yure has already graduated. They graduated on the 31st and they went out with a bang, but of course, not without controversy. And this controversy is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. The dark past, whatever you want to call it, of Yuko Yure. Let's get through this and... Uh, I will let you know what I think. Yuko Yure, what really happened? I feel like the truth needs to be heard. Please respect the privacy of Yuko, of course, and people surrounding this. I have censored the names and PL accounts involved. Some might call this drama, but it's the reason Yuko Yure ended the way she did. I am mostly doing this because I feel that boo bros are getting treated unfairly in the eyes of the public. Mods, delete this if you must, but if it believe it clears all the rules says first of all i would like to say that i was briefly part of yuko's fan base as a lurker joined right before the hiatus and before enjoying her content i remembered her and didn't mind her gfe shtick because she did have a strong gfe shtick I, I thought she was really talented and i found it interesting that she only invested in what she was into the lives of her fans and interacted with them basically the interaction was good join the idol fan discord to see what they knew was going on, I was thrown into a rabbit hole that was an emotional roller coaster. I read and read and read and watched most everything that happened up until this point really affected me. It really hurts to know the truth sometimes. I watched as people laughed and criticized her fans knowing anything. Uh, to start out, I'd like to discuss that Yuko's content was like, no, I, would, I will not post members' content out of respect for Yuko. Of course, also, it will probably get copyright struck. Uh, Yuko is not your normal GFE streamer. She took it to the next level. She described how she didn't want a parasocial relationship with her fans because she actually wanted to get to know them. She would ask for Maro's frequently, uh, ask for people's days, write member posts on her days, share personal stories, and constantly push her boundaries of how close a streamer should get to her fans. Started out slowly, began to build over the months of her time at Idol Corp. She began to say she loved them. Ooh, that's a very, very dangerous thing. When you mention that you like love, love your fans, like loving them all the time and, and love bombing them, that's a dangerous one. She would like constantly make references to being girlfriend on a very frequent basis, not just in RP streams. Fans started to admit their feelings to her. Some were concerned they knew it was a fantasy that could never be fulfilled. They asked her if it was okay to love her. She said that's what she wanted. They asked if it bothered her to people who were obsessed. She says what she wanted to encourage. So she was encouraging this in the worst way possible. She did it all sorts. This is a, a very, very bad way to be. Horrible way to be. You don't do this uh, unless like you actually want a relationship and you actually try for a relationship. You don't do this. This is a very bad parasocial way. This is going on 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 extremes. Did all sorts of GFE content sprinkled in everywhere. She would do very explicit ASMRs and even indulge herself while doing so. So she uh, did things to herself while doing so. She even accepted receiving tributes. Oh, God, that goes way further. That is a very, very dark thing to do. Um, if you're not like an OF person or a Patreon person, this is really bad stuff to do. Made her donathon goals very explicit with some goals reaching high as $20,000. Even after reaching her top goal, her fans continued to contribute. She made 34 k by the end of the donathon. Continuing on after a donathon, she would continue to love bomb her audience and hype up the rewards, especially spicy ASMR, which promised to be her most explicit one yet. This is very, very bad. One of the phrases she would use on occasion, honesty is policy. She promised she would always be honest with her fans. Her fans loved her. And uh, despite this, people would anti her fan base constantly because they thought they were GFE degenerates. Most of this hate came from her support PL fan base. At one point, one of Yuko's fans pulled a really vapid stunt, posted this tribute publicly. It was gross to find out, but Yuko consented to receiving them, so I can't judge too harshly. Yuko accidentally saw it while streaming and freaked out, but it laughed about it. It was pretty big controversy at the time, supposedly. Yuko didn't seem bothered by it. Continued her normal song and dance. It ended in them in the person being doxxed by someone that was likely from her PL fan base. Yes, some of Yuko's fans were weird freaks, but they genuinely loved her and were some of the most passionate people I've ever seen. From making and commissioning art on an almost weekly basis to making massive projects and gifts for her. This wasn't just buying her throne gifts, but putting their love, passion, and skills to work to make personal gifts. This is not, I don't blame the fans on this one. I blame Yuko 100%. Everyone was happy, so it was thought. Cue the downfall. Began around October 2023 when Yuko started to act different. She began to stream less and less. Fans were concerned that they thought she wasn't happy. They got together and asked in mottos if something was wrong because of lack of streams. Of course, she said honesty is policy. That's what was originally done. She came on stream to address it. At first, her fans apologized by bringing it up and uh, she insisted it was okay. She began to put her worries to ease, stating that it was just really busy working on Donathon goals and a recent October attack. Uh, attacks were affecting the company. She vented a bunch about management and she said she would try to stream more. The fans insisted that she doesn't have to do any higher effort material or that she could just stream having fun or hanging out. The rest of October was met with less streams as her fans began to expect. 
uh, never wa- they never wavered in her support. They were a little worried, though. Something was off. This is when I joined, funnily enough. Come November, Rero Ron's situation occurred, causing a massive amount of stress to the talents and the fan base. Because Rero Ron, as we know, they, she went for the, you know, the, the funny pills and the other Rero Ron, like, meeting up with Rero Ron and all that kind of stuff. Uh, pretty much, if you know her, PL is pretty much on on uh, on base with what she usually does. Yuko went silent for the day. She apologized for not saying anything, but it was obvious that it affected her as she fairly close to Riro. Later that month, she did a member stream where she discussed how happy she was being where she was and had no regrets doing any of the explicit streams and she liked doing them. She talked about wanting to do more content, uh, such as Cabela's stream, my favorite stream, to be honest, other kinds of skit content, to proceed well. Later in the stream, she went dead silent for about five to ten minutes. She said she was crying during the time and implied how she loved what she'd built up. I think the fans thought it was strange, but I wasn't paying attention at the time. Later, she discussed getting a new laptop from management so she could stream on vacation. She said she knew how much people would miss her streams with her taking so many vacations recently. December came. She was love bombing the audience more and more and more than usual and sending tweets about how she will always love her boo bros. Her December streams did not last long, as she soon found out she was accidentally ODing on Afrin. She was taking too much Afrin, uh, which was causing her some fairly annoying sinus issues. She was likely suffering from some other amount of side effects from withdrawal. She came back and did another member stream, hyping up her spicy ASMR. So she's still doing the spicy ASMR. Not good. It is not good to go that parasocial with your fans. Of course, there's some parasociality is normal in the VTuber space and in the content creator space, but actually pushing for it actually creating a, a spot where that happens is never good just on a personal level it'd be fun to shop for her toys on stream her fans were shocked by this and seemed to enjoy it she talked about her feelings the rest of the stream she she went for the adult stuff uh and the usual ramblings her fans had come to love christmas came and she did a few fun skit streams before leaving for vacation where she said she would try to tweet a bunch for her boo bros she did one laptop stream on her vacation and her fans expected her that she was going to come back with her family then shortly after christmas uh, it happened. The action that would completely change the trajectory of her career and pretty much bring the downfall, in my opinion, of what was to be her career. And uh, Christmas had come and gone. Yuko decided to recreate. This is still a long one. This is a very long one. We're going to go through all of it. Um, create her past life account on Twitter after tweeting something vaguely bad was happening uh, within Idol and eventually things would be so back. While that was happening, word spread on Twitter, 4chan and Discord that her PL was back. Fans were worried, but they were going to support her anyways. Didn't matter where she went, she would, they would follow. She hinted at reactivating her PL account at a member's post. If you had a keen eye, you would have picked it up. She then went to her PL YouTube uh, community section to address the fans that had come to Yuko and was happy to see her familiar faces. She told them to spread the word that she was returning to her PL. Activities all was going well in her usual kind of tweets, but then she made her fatal first mistake. She made a vague post on her member saying that she was at a crossroads, that she couldn't say what she was wrong. And basically, this, this was bad. You know, whether it was intentional or not, she accepted her biggest fans a matter of minutes. Uproar ensued. Uh, she upset all her biggest fans by saying, you know, she was um, she was going to be changing things. Uh, Pandora's box had been opened. So what was it that caused a massive amount of backlash? From the outside, it seemed like they were upset that she wasn't streaming as she promised, but the other things were happening. Uh, misinformation is being spread by drama tuber channels. Yes, one reason the hiatus was a burnout. That was much obvious in October, but the whole truth was that her PL account was the main cause of her long hiatus at the beginning of what would be a long winter for the Boo Bros. The thing about Yuko is that she had some interesting connections with 4chan in her past life. Connections happened to be the guns board uh, typically referred to as K. This was fine by itself, but the company she surrounded herself was the main issue. I won't go into serious allegations or even that, it, you know, any other things that were happening, but she removed her association with them in the past. Um, they basically, those people were, were, were despised by the boo bros. She de- destroyed the, the, the connection that she had with them. Two individuals were considered aunties to the boo bros. They hated what Yuko had become. They hated the content that she created, hated the fan base. They were quite vocal about everything happening. From the Bubo's experience, they have sent some weird DMs, but I cannot confirm myself because these are all allegations, of course, of attached censored images of what they have been posting recently and why I believe the Boo Bros allegations to be true. There's more serious allegations in terms of meetups at K events. I will not delve into this. Issue started when Yuko liked and followed them on her PL account, which would, of course, get some people angry. People started asking questions why she was following people who were aunties, why she reopened her PL, that she actually hate her fans, that she actually hate being Yuko. All these allegations popped up. It's like, why wasn't she following fan artists? Why isn't she following her friends at Idol? Why she why prioritize following the, the bad people, the people who are aunties? There were just a big stink happening about this. Talk of grievances of being crossroads sent a message to her fans. They took it as her endorsing the aunties and really despised her fans. This caused basically, you know, this was a big S storm that hit hard. Um, 
she was acting strange. Then her daily tweet stopped. She said honesty was policy. So why is she avoiding answering? The fans were starting to panic. They were, everything was starting to panic, starting to, to fall apart. Uh, they went to the official Discord to share their public concerns with each other. And leave. Uh, some began to leave, while others were just waiting and concerned. Boo Bros did not account for something. Fan Discord was being watched by an ex-moderator of hers. Speculation and anger that was supposed to be contained by her fan server was likely being leaked to Yuko. On other things, Boo Bros had a connection with the K-Antis Discord. Allegedly, the supposed antis were gloating that they were convinced they convinced her to stop doing ASMR. I cannot confirm the veracity of these statements. The problem here is that trust was shattered. The vocal Boo Bros uh, reached out to Marshmallow account, supposedly voicing their displeasure. It's likely she was flooded with criticism, anger, confusion. Models are usually filtered through an AI to weed out negativity, so I don't know how much of it actually reached her. A week passed with uh, the, the Boo Bros continuing to discuss the drama and fan discord. Moderators told them to avoid doom posting and alluding to her PL account. Infighting ensued. Of course, infighting always happens. Um, things started getting messy. The 4chan thread of Idol was up in flames, mocking Boo Bros, mocking Yuko, mocking her Kate trends, friends. Uh, thread was raided by individuals that were either k antis themselves or people pretending to be them. Shortly after, one of them decided to change their Twitter name to Oshi Slayer. While this was happening, a self-entitled fan decided to dox on Kiwi Farms. This got spread to 4chan, an Oshi Slayer private account. Week passed. Yuko was silent until she tweeted an announcement apologizing for making people worry that she would be back streaming full-time soon. She then privated her account and refrained from posting on it. Boo Bros relaxed. They would soon have their answers and she would be back soon. Didn't come back, not for an entire month. A month and a half, actually. Uh, this waiting caused Boo Bros a lot of pain. She promised that she would never leave them in the dark, so why is she doing this now? A Valentine's Day approached, began to get more agitated and lose patience. She lied to them. You know, that's what happens when you have a... a when you when you create the boyfriend-girlfriend experience, you have people this way. They waited and waited, and some decided they couldn't take the anxiety of waiting to address things. One by one, they began to move to other people. They changed their avatars back from Boo Bros, mascot they once loved. Valentine's Day week came. She announced the schedule. Most Boo Bros were anxious to hear what she had to say, but most had enough already. They were already ready to leave. And um, it looked like she was going to graduate. That would have been better for the Boo Bros, considering what happened next. Uh, again, parasocial fans, this happens. The announcement stream began with her old intro. Once she hadn't used in a long time, she was a mess. She couldn't stop laughing nervously, which agitated the Boo Bros. It appears she wasn't taking things seriously. She teased it. She knew why they were upset, and she said that she was going to address the elephants in the room. Instead of responding to the controversy, she said she was dropping GFE for good and that her old content would be deleted by the end of the week. Last straw for the remaining people that were supporting her. Her fans were furious. Basically, they felt betrayed because they didn't get the Donathon goals. They didn't get the memories that she promised. Everything was going to be deleted. All the memories that they created were going to be deleted for an entire year. They protested. They got angry. They felt that she was lying to them. Uh, some of them fish w wish that she game ended herself. Um, the uh, Most of it was just bad criticism. One changed the profile to suggest she was a bad person and felt that it had been taken advantage of. Uh, most attacked her, uh, most of her attached fans told her they were leaving because they were so disappointed. Basically, she didn't handle things well at all. They left after a shame her fans were called names, toxic, psychos, freaks, degenerates, incels. They were just basically uh, dragged through the mud. She didn't defend them. Uh, Yuko deleted most of her content one hour later uh, instead of the week she had initially said, so she lied to them again. Fans tried to defend herself, saying how they betrayed they felt, and just deleted all the evidence of her being the one pushing them to be parasocial, to be honest with her. So she was trying to get rid of all the evidence. From what it looked like to everyone, including an outside observer like me, she was trying to delete the evidence of her mistakes of making people too parasocial, making them love her, love bombing them, uh, pleasing herself to them, doing all that kind of stuff, you know, and just making it seem like she's an innocent person. Uh, apology, they wanted to apologize for the retracting the goals, retracting all this type of stuff. Um, she never apologized and only decided to address the issues of the members stream one week later. Uh, and then here's where we have. She admitted she hurt people again, but never apologized. Her, exp her explanation of quitting GFB was that she was getting stressed out and bad burnout. She decided to push the blame onto some of the fans. So she decided to blame the fans instead of taking responsibility for what she did. This is not going to help any situation, and it didn't help her. She wasn't getting enough support on her other content that people would wanted more ASMR and was stressing her out. This was a flat-out lie. She was the one pushing the ASMR. People were saying, you know, take your time. People were saying all these other things. She giving her space, giving her time to do it. They gave her pretty much, like, months to do this, and she didn't do it herself. They were basically, uh, they were all positive in every single stream. It could have been the complaints were being sent via Marshmallow, but the issue with Marshmallow is that it's anonymous. Anyone can say anything, so it could be anti saying that stuff. They invites bad actors to join. Uh, a lot of the harassment was probably not from the Boo Bros. Maybe some of it was. Nobody does 
like uh, the harassment, of course. All I saw was positivity. Later on in the stream, Yuko briefly suggested that people not make fun of her fans, but left that left. But the fact that she was still following the people that did make her message, uh, it made her, you know, message insincere because she was following people that were aunties as well. Now X fans looking at her deleting her lies and blaming them for change in content. It's blatant gaslighting. For, it's frustrating because I get it. I saw the members post. Uh, this person saw the members post. This person saw how until the day she uh, disappeared. Her fans worried about her being well. They worried about her well-being more than anything. Last member streams, a bunch of boo bros were asking if she was still comfortable with the behavior. With the content she made, she enthusiastically said yes. She was lying to them again and again. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills aside in my own eyes. But I don't have the proof to back it up because all was deleted by her. Always be the boo bros who look bad in the face of the public, of course, because, you know, the fans end up taking the brunt of it. Yuko controls the narrative. Yuko, eventually Yuko began to feel the consequences of her actions, weeks of donations being almost nothing. The people who claimed to support her content shift had barely donated a penny. They got to the point where she had streamed complaining about her stress getting to the point of almost having a panic attack. This is where she cried and potentially having to work a normal job like Starbucks and Walmart. But she, it was basically, she caused her own downfall. Unfortunately for Yuko, a scorned ex boo bro troll decided to leak the clip to 4chan. This got picked up by banned VT memes and went viral. Banned VT memes seemed to have sided with the fans and provided bastardized versions of the events to the likes of thousands of Twitter followers, with it being slightly inaccurate. Despite this, her biggest ex supporter either just corrected some details and confirmed the rest, but nothing else to say as far as I'm aware. Yuko pretty much stopped streaming after this event and decided to graduate. She's now reopened her PL account uh, and kept following the K antis, started all this. Uh, Yuko ignored the hundreds of dollars of, of donations. Um, additionally, Yuko has now attempted to complete her donathon goal. She promised with the exception of the spicy SMR, which is a top goal worth thousands of dollars. She decided to mock the idea as that she promised long ago, made love of her video with 15 minutes of her eating noodles. Most of her biggest ex supporters didn't care, but a few people came to laugh at a bunch criticized heavily for pulling out such a large donathon goal and mocking the people who paid. Yes, it's bad to mock the people who paid. They paid, they should get a product. They paid for a certain product. You promise a certain product, they should get it. Some thoughts. Situation was handled very poorly by Yuko, an interesting case of studying VTubing scandals. Uh, I'm reminded by Nanners of the scandal that happened uh, a decade ago. At first, I thought um, the boo bros were crazy. Uh, the whole event kicked off with digging to find context. I found myself in my asthma of emotions. She just ignored it. I won't suppress support some of the accusations that were made towards her uh, as evidence of shaking uh, that I don't think spreading criminal accusations without sufficient evidence, even though a lot of suspicion is surrounding the fans. The Boo Bros definitely pushed her away until some of the discourse they had at the fan server was meant to be a contained. That being said, I think Yuko was irresponsible and hurt a lot of people. It hurt me to see her fans done dirty. It is even uh, more frustrating that so few people know exactly what happened. Granted, there probably were a couple bad apples in there. Of course, there were. But uh, always be careful who you follow on Twitter. And here is some of the information that they put out. The K artist, author of Veil Rider series and the Bronze series, followed by Yuko PL. This is Yuko PL being, you know, following them. And this is, hey, Boo Bros busted. And this is, you know, just more, more negativity. I guess bros are just ghosts in the wind. And then busted, broken even. They booed her, they booed her their last forever a ghost in the wind. This is around the time that she was saying that she was going to go back to the stuff and not do her spicy stuff anymore. Only there to endure and watch. They do like to watch. So making fun of Boo Bros, making fun of all that kind of stuff. Look, came here looking for copper. What the F is this? You know, people responding to this. I think this was just a huge mistake, a huge scandal, a huge death nail to the whole situation, to her whole career, a dark and deep seated past that I wanted to cover. Etheria is having a 3D concert uh, on June 8th and 9th. And of course, you know, it is, has been posted. Seems that, like uh, lack any real fanfare, just 3D video featuring the talents. Maybe they'll amp up some kind of promo. Who knows about the promos? You, we all know that Nidhi Sanji is not good at doing promos. Uh, something tells me the motivation won't be too high. For those wondering, it's the same date as Fleon's uh, 3D. It's not going to do well. Uh, Fleon's 3D is going to do well, but the Ethereum 3D I don't think is going to do well. Guessing they scraped Petra and Rosemary Group because 3D had Selen in it. Uh, I noticed how Nidhi's been ramping up the 3D lives recently. Not going to lie, they ain't looking good. Watch Solomon's 3D. Stage work sucks major, but of course it does. That's one thing I, I criticized, and I was criticized for criticizing that, but I still believe they could have done way better, and she didn't deserve that. And his clippings are fine because it happens to Hollow Talents too, but the flood screen with random lighting to trick the viewers into thinking that it was a stage act is colorful, but in reality, you remove the lighting stage, was really empty and looked amateurish. That's the thing. It looked amateurish to me, but, um, you know, basically them hyping everything up, saying they're going to be doing the 3D and, you know, going through everything. And some people were saying 
that they are going to be having the 3D as it was originally supposed to be off Kai, according to these people, of course, because it, the timing is just too close. Maybe they just weren't able to do it at off Kai. Maybe they didn't have the ability to, or they didn't want to, or something happened with scheduling that made off Kai not a thing. Uh, we get in for free for the supposedly overpriced off Kai tickets, big W. So yeah, you know, uh, we get to look at it for free. We get to look at it and, and you know, criticize it or whatever for free. Um, whether it was supposed to be Opkai or not, it's still not going to be a success. At least I don't think so. As you guys know, I love doing memes. And this one says, I just got accepted to Niji. POV, you're a part of Niji Sanji, and then you breathe. And finally, you have the project notice of contact termination. You breathe, and then it happens. Oh, God. That's kind of like what they do now to everybody. Kuro Sanji, how do we find a full Moko killer? And it's right there. You, it's Virtual Talent Academy. Look at what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. The fraction of the power of the Bao Bao. It is just a fraction of the power, for goodness sakes. They don't have any way of getting anywhere near the power. Kuro Sanji's quarter four financial report this month. Prepare yourselves. Hey, Riku. Uh, we know that Kuro Sanji isn't doing so well right now, but it's going to get way worse after the quarter four report. Oh, yeah. It's going to get way worse. Absolutely. The quarter four report is going to be a meme in and of itself. Remember, it's around June 11th this year. And here we have Nidhi Sanji dealing with their subreddit, be like also JP News tubers, reporters and critics. Uh, Nidhi Sanji to our Nidhi Sanji, they blew it up. And Nidhi Sanji to free speech, they're blowing it up as well. Because, of course, they love destroying free speech in Japan because of the lovely laws that allow them to do that in Japan, unfortunately. We have Gavis Battles 3D that happened recently, the showcase. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of what it is because, you know, go and take a look at it yourself. But um, we're going to take a little bit of a look of the 3D showcase that was going on. Ooh, very nice. Up in the sky. Uh, and this guy, it's and really well done. Holy crap. Problem. They have the, they have the, the, the half, the half moving around. It's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. They had this, the singing. <laughs> it's actually not bad. And the, the shadows are doing very well. So it's, it's very fun. I love that when they have fun things like this. Vanguard 3D debuting despite debuting a whole year after Luxium. The competence of Niji Sanji management. Uh, this is all out war, they said. They're beaten so hard and it's come out from thick as enemy. Uh, it's effing amazing 3D showcase. Kept effing laughing throughout it. Yeah, it seems like a fun 3D showcase. Just giving you a small little sniver, 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 sniver stuff of the 3D show showcase and the people's ideas. He destroyed Niji EN in his views. He does have a lot of views for this showcase. He has 83k views. He had a lot of live people there. It was just a lot of fun, and I'm glad that he got to do it and that all of Vanguard is getting it. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.